Live from KSAT 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. And good morning to you. It is Tuesday, the 26th. Mr. Austin, welcome back. Thank you. Nice long weekend. Y'all rested? I am. I'm feeling good. Well, now it's time to get to work. Okay, yes, ma'am. We're on it. All right. Hey, this is a cool story. Yeah, you found this one today. USA Today, Crayola is launching a box of crayons with uh, diverse skin tones. This is really neat. Take a look at, at what it looks like. It's called Colors of the World Crayons. They said in a statement it includes 24 new crayons designed to mirror and represent over 40 different skin tones. Crayola's CEO said, with the world growing more diverse than ever before, Crayola hopes our new Colors of the World Crayons will increase representation and foster a greater sense of belonging and acceptance. They said we want the new Colors of the World Crayons to advance inclusion within creativity and impact how kids express themselves. Crayons themselves will be wrapped in a what they're called gradient skin tone label with the color name in English, Spanish, and French and a realistic color name such as light golden, deep almond, and medium deep rose. Now, Colors of the World will be available in July in a 24 and 32 count pack. The 32 count crayon pack will only be sold at Walmart. Exclusively. And mm -hmm. Crayola made the announcement uh, last week to coincide with United Nations World Day for Cultural Diversity for Dialogue and Development, which is a mouthful, but that was Wednesday. I like how they started off. No more green, red, or blue people, because a lot of kids just grab a color and I make know. them. Now they can try to actually emulate their own color. I think that's pretty cool. Take a look at your rundown. Firefighters were called out at 1130 last night to a car wash on the north side at West Avenue and Trudell Drive. The call came out as a structure fire, but firefighters discovered it was a car parked inside a wash stall. Memorial Day will forever be a dark memory for one San Antonio family. That's after their four-year-old boy was accidentally shot and killed during a family barbecue. It happened on the east side on Avant Avenue. Authorities say 23-year-old University of Connecticut senior Peter Manfredonia is on the run, wanted in connection with two murders and a kidnapping spanning at least three states. A pro-democracy protest inside a mall in Hong Kong included demonstrators carrying signs asking American troops to help protect citizens. The latest numbers of COVID-19 cases in Bear County. This morning there are a total of 2,449 confirmed cases. There are no new cases at the county jail and there are no new deaths to report. The World Health Organization on Monday also warned countries where coronavirus infections are declining could still face an immediate second peak of the virus. Students from San Antonio wrote letters of support to people affected by the coronavirus in San Antonio's sister city, Wuchi, China. Students there are now responding with their own message, sending thousands of masks and messages to support San Antonio. SpaceX plans to launch NASA astronauts into space for the first time this week. NASA has officially announced the mission to go. The launch is scheduled to take place at Cape Canaveral, Florida tomorrow. Honors for homebound veterans Police in one New Jersey city performed drive-by salutes in place of their annual Memorial Day parade. So you can now rent an entire ballpark in Florida on Airbnb for $1,500 a oh. night. You'll get access to the clubhouse, batting cage, and the field. The stadium has a bedroom and ocean okay. views. Okay. State night. I, we still haven't seen the bedroom in that ballpark Airbnb. I think that's strategy on their part. You think? They're not showing it for a reason. Or the couch that you just saw in the, the locker bedroom. room is the pull-out bed, and that, you're right, yep, they're not being specific for a reason. Mm-hmm. I'm a little suspicious. We, I, I learned that from Justin Horn. To be suspicious, <laughs> suspicious of? Of everything. <laughs> it's true. It be is true about you. Be skeptical. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, they, yeah, you guys, we're looking outside right now. We've got some clouds. Currently, we were watching a couple storms a little bit earlier. If you're watching Mike, we had a severe storm just last hour. Uh, that was working towards Lakey right there. That little storm, it's already falling apart as quickly as it formed. It's, it's pretty much gone now, but uh, we were looking at some of the storm reports and uh, they were pretty impressive. We had some reports of some uh, golf ball size hail uh, just near the Devil's Sinkhole there in Edwards County and uh, that storm falling apart. We've got one little storm there in Blanco County that's also falling apart and then some storms around Austin. But uh, right now things are pretty clear here around San Antonio, just those morning clouds and I think they'll go away pretty quickly. And then we'll be looking at some sun this afternoon, maybe a couple more isolated storms, temperatures in the 80s and then some more chances of storms down the line. We're going to talk rainfall totals and also uh, just how much more rain could we expect this week. That's coming up here in just a few minutes, guys. 
Thank you very much, Justin. 35 at 1103. Light traffic showing up there. And we have other cameras around town, obviously dozens and dozens. We didn't see any accidents uh, for the latter part of the morning commute. Things are getting more and more back to normal each and every day. Top stories we're following today. San Antonio police looking at the cause of death of an infant early this morning. The incident happened at the Santerra Heights Apartments on Stone Oak Parkway. It was just after 4 o'clock this morning. They say the mother called 911 because her baby was not breathing and was on the floor. EMS worked to save him, but he later died on scene. Officers add that the death looked suspicious, so the mother was taken into custody for a mental evaluation after exhibiting odd behavior. She is also a suspect. Currently waiting on a search warrant. Well, San Antonio Police and Crime Stoppers are looking for the people responsible for robbing an elderly man at gunpoint in the parking lot of a motel. Now, this happened on Thursday, May 14th. It was around 4 o'clock in the morning. According to police, two men approached the victim in the parking lot of the Sands Motel on Austin Highway and held them at gunpoint. Him, I should say. The 73-year-old victim told police the suspects demanded his money, his cell phone, and car keys. Police said the suspects ran off with the victim's property. If you have information that can lead to arrest, call Crime Stoppers 210-224-STOP. Checking your morning headlines, a brush fire in California and a World War II memorial vandalized on Memorial Day. Wreckage of a World War II battleship has been found and a 13-year-old headed to college. 13 years old. Oh, Take that, Judy Hauser. I, I think he earned four degrees. Yeah. At that age, he earned four degrees. We'll get to that in just a second. I f feel remarkably inadequate with my bachelor's degree now. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, it's four associate's degrees, but still. That's true. Well, it's still. Still an accomplishment, but absolutely I mean, you know, you're only 13. So what do you do with your childhood? Where'd it go? He's still a cute kid, though. Yeah. All right. And he, he's probably did. He wants to keep learning. OK, you'll tell us about that. Why am I telling you? I, <laughs> <laughs> I can go back home, go back to bed. No, 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 no stay no, right no, there. No, you're good. No, no. You're good. We need you here. We need take you here. a nap, something. Here, my chair's sure. sinking. Hurry and take the other okay, shot, please. <laughs> Uh, you know, this is never a good sign anywhere, but especially in California, that's a brush fire. And you can see it's not very far away from storage tanks. It's only about 10 acres, but with dry conditions and a heat wave in the southern part of the state, spreading becomes a major concern. This is on a hillside in Pomona. 85 firefighters, three choppers fought that fire from the ground in the air. That's how serious they were taking this one. It started about 530 last night. They were able to contain it to just those 10 acres. And a lot of folks think seeing this is pretty disgusting. That is a military monument that was vandalized on Memorial Day. It is a World War II memorial in Pittsburgh that got splashed with some red paint and some message that you couldn't really make out. The city's public safety director reacted, quote, incomprehensible that someone would vandalize a military memorial at the time when the nation honors its fallen service members, end quote. Officials are looking through some surveillance video from the area and will have that monument cleaned up. And you are looking at pictures of the USS Nevada sitting about 15,000 feet under the surface off the coast of Hawaii. The USS Nevada was a battleship that was sunk during the attack on Pearl Harbor. However, it sank in shallow water. It was repaired and then served out its time in World War II. After serving in both wars, World War I and World War II, in 1948, the Navy decided to use it for atomic bomb practice. It became radioactive, so they hit it with torpedoes and finally sank it. It was decommissioned in 46. An underwater search company found the wreckage in six, 65 miles southwest of Pearl Harbor in 15,000 feet of water. And this is a young man we were just talking about. You'd like to meet this kid for no other reason than to say, hey, I met him. We're buds. He's a smart kid and I know him. That's Jack Rico. He's 13. He's now got four associate degrees. Yes, four of them. He just added to his diploma collection with an associate's degree from Fullerton College in California. So now he's going after the full four year deal. Yep, he's headed to the University of Nevada on a full scholarship to get a BS in history. Well, I mean, I'm 13, so I don't want to like rush everything. Like I'm still trying to figure it out, but I just want to focus on learning right now because that's what I love to do. Yes, please slow down, Jack. Don't rush it. <laughs> Take your time on <laughs> getting all those degrees. You'll probably end up with like 20 degrees before it's all over. He started college when he was 11. He earned those four degrees in just two years. And oh, by the way, when he's not studying and earning degrees, guess what he likes to do? Play video games. Yeah, of course. Play video he's games. He's a kid. Yeah. yeah. All right. All right. We're going to finish with an ah moment. Congratulations to the Beluga family. Mom and baby doing just fine. You see mom's actually giving birth right here. 
So you're watching the birth of this calf. This is at the Georgia Aquarium. Mom, 20 year old whisper, no name for the baby yet. However, the newborn came in at 174 pounds, five foot, four inches. Mom, baby, you're bonding. Of course, the aquarium's closed because of the coronavirus. So no visitors just yet, but when the visitors are allowed in, they'll have a sight to see. Look at them. They're Huge. beautiful. Oh, see, now that was precious. We've seen a panda deliver before and that didn't, that went sideways pretty Yeah, that quick. was an oops yeah. on the air. We were yeah. showing a cute little panda, but then that one we didn't out. mean to show the yeah. burp. Yeah, so, but that was then. That was this good. is now. Yeah, 174 pounds, five yeah. foot four to start life. Ooh. By the way, that 13 year old, baby. he's yeah. gonna be running this place in four years. Yeah, I mean, he's I might not even track. take four years. I know, right? <laughs> I just like the fact that he's taking his time. I know. He's not, he's not in a rush. Four <laughs> associate's degree. Yeah. At 13 years, years but old. He, but he talks like he's 33 years old. I know, he's smarter than all of us combined. An old and a full soul. scholarship to go to a four year scholarship. Good for him. And he deserves it. Yep. All right, thanks, David. Thank you, David. Right now, it's just about 909, 72 degrees still ahead on GMSA at 9. We have a story of today's great grad, Alex Kuban, the major milestone that helped him stand out to, to several universities. The Boy Scout, been playing taps outside a nursing home in New Jersey. Why it meant so much to the people who live there, just ahead on GMSA at 9. Spurs give using a million dollar fund to try to help our local economy. Good morning, I'm Max Massey. All the details right after the break. And checking the stock market. Whoa, it is up and big time up 544 points at 25,013. I haven't heard or seen that animation in a little while. I miss it. Me too. Well, through this pandemic and through these economic hardships, a lot of organizations and local businesses are stepping up and helping out. The Spurs organization doing just that with their Spurs Give nonprofit. Max Massey joins us live from Charity Bar with specifics. Hey, Max. Hi, Max. Good morning, guys. Yes, Spurs Give has a million dollar initiative going on right now. For more specifics, we have Tara from Spurs Give. So Tara, explain to everyone why we're here at Charity Bar. So we're here at Charity Bar because they have been one of our amazing supporters of this fund, giving back to our community. They provided meals to families in need. So this fund we started a few weeks ago, it's called the Spurs Give Together Fund. It is a million dollar initiative. And we are so close to closing the gap that we're hoping by the end of this week, with the support of our community, we will be able to fulfill that gap of $500,000 that we were hoping our community would come and support. So we're so close. You can go to spursgive.org backslash together. You can donate if you're interested. It goes to support first responders in our community, families in need through local nonprofits and local commerce like Charity Bar so that they can provide meals for folks in need in San Antonio. Talked about that economic gap you guys are trying to bridge, but also the technological gap and you guys are helping with yeah, that. We are. So what we're looking to do is uh, provide 800 families in San Antonio with free Wi-Fi and hotspots for the rest of the year. But in the meantime, if you go to the AT&T Center, if you need Wi-Fi, you can go to the parking lot from 8 a.m. to 7.30 p.m. You can pull up, bring your cell phone, your laptop, whatever it may be to connect and accomplish what you need to. If you use the password Spurs Give, you'll be able to access this free Wi-Fi. All right, Tara, thank you so much. Thank you. And guys, we have a lot more coming up at 9.30. We are joined by Austin, a Spurs trainer. He's going to talk about the logistics of the new Spurs virtual summer camp and how you guys can take part. Mark, Leslie. Austin, great name. Thank you, Max. Cool to be talking about sports. Thanks, yes, guys. it is. All right, we'll see you a bit, Max. Uh, Justin joins us now. Been tracking some storms, uh, gosh, now for days and days and days. And yeah. wow, we are really catching up in the rainfall department, too, for the month of May. We are big time. Some big numbers. The aquifer is jumping up. It's up in feet, so that's great news. And yes, it's been several nights now, some storms. Let's take a look at the radar right now because we still have a little bit of action out there. We had one storm earlier this morning that did go severe in parts of Edwards and Real County. That has completely gone away now. You see how quickly it dissipated, but it did drop some hail before it fell apart. We had some reports of some golf ball size hail there in northern Edwards County. Uh, everyone else, for the most part, is uh, doing okay now. We have one little storm that's just to the east of Blanco. That's going to work towards I-35, uh, maybe north of San Marcos there. Otherwise, we've also got some clouds starting to move in. It's not going to be a sunny day, but I think we'll see more sun than we've seen the last couple of days. And so that should allow temperatures to get up into the 80s. But you see some of the remnant cloud cover here from some of those storms a little bit earlier. That's going to work through San Antonio next couple of hours. And let's take a look at the future cast. It does show that uh, we could see a few isolated storms uh, this morning. And then again this afternoon, it's possible 
one or two popping up uh, even around five o'clock. Now, don't get too excited about that. It shows a storm maybe moving in San Antonio. And we're not going to worry too much about location, you know, where this model is popping up storms. What we just need to know here is that there's an outside chance of an isolated storm today. Right now we have it at about a 20% chance. It's possible uh, that you could get some, some rain where you are, uh, but not likely. Observed rainfall over the past 72 hours. Boy, these numbers are huge. 2.74. So this is the, over the last three days or so. And you see the numbers uh, 2.96 in Seguin, 2.78 Floresville, Pleasanton 2.02, uh, Medina Lake 2.96. So this really it has been helpful to us as far as making up uh, the gap that we had uh, in our rainfall deficit. And also the lakes and the aquifers, they're all filling up. Uh, 3.50 at Stinson, 4.27 at Alamo Ranch. Again, this is over the last 72 hours. And uh, live cam not working for us. I think we took a lightning strike uh, on live cam uh, with those storms. But 72 degrees, dew point is at 66. And uh, 64 Bernie stays, 67 Comfort, 69 Rio Medina, and 75 right now in Del Rio, 71 in Cotua. Dew points are still up there. We're talking mid 60s here, so it's still uh, a little humid this morning. And uh, water vapor, water vapor will pop up here in a second, I think. Uh, and I'll show you that, that we have a big area of low pressure here across North Texas that is uh, more or less uh, just sitting there. And we'll just go on past it now and talk about the future cast. So today. Again, just some isolated storms, but as we get into tomorrow, we'll have to watch a complex potentially coming out of North Texas. That may work, work its way down into our area by the afternoon. And then another little disturbance on Thursday and a Friday may kick off more showers and storms. So we're not done with the rain just yet. Uh, there are some more chances down the line. Today, though, just a 20% chance of rain. 83 degrees, northwesterly winds 5 to 10 miles per hour. And then 90 coming up tomorrow, 20% chance of storms, mainly after the north and east of San Antonio. We'll watch for a little cluster of storms. And then 90 Thursday, 30% chance. Friday morning, we could see another one of those nighttime storm systems. That'll be something to watch. And then some isolated stuff into the weekend. So rain chances aren't as big as they have been, but they are there. And May has been pretty good to us so far when it comes to, to rainfall, guys. Thank you, Justin. Right now it is 918, 72 degrees. Here's what's coming up. In eight years, a local Eagle Scout was able to achieve what only few have done in the history of the Boy Scouts of America organization. And now he's headed to one of the most prestigious universities in the country. I have his full great grad story just ahead on GMSA at 9. Nine twenty-one. big goals and a positive attitude. That's how today's great graduate says he was able to achieve a major milestone that helped him stand out to several universities. Alex Kuban is graduating in the top 10 of his senior class at NISD's Communications Arts High School and was accepted to Trinity and Purdue University. He shared more than his major accomplishment and his college pick with Alicia Badera. At 11 years old, Alex Kuban set a goal for himself. My goal from the beginning was to try and get the 138. In eight years and in between sports, academics, and school clubs. One of my favorite things to do in high school was I was the vice president of my environment club. He put in the extra effort to accomplish what only about 450 others have done in the history of the Boy Scouts of America organization. It's like a great accomplishment that I was able to do. The first one is just filled up. Alex earned all 138 badges. My goal from the beginning was to try and get the 138. So I, I kind of thought I was going to be able to get it, but that's just a lot of the, you can't have self doubt in your head that when you're 12 years old and you're trying to do something. That he also raised thousands of dollars for dinner and hygiene kits for the homeless community in San Antonio as part of his Eagle Scout project. I think the accomplishment did help me stand out and it shows the universities that I'm more involved with things in my community than just trying to get good grades in school, you know. This communication art high school seniors accomplishments caught the attention of one of the most prestigious universities in the nation. I'm going to Purdue University and I'll be majoring in data science. The parks that they're playing in, they actually have a distinct effect on how the players play. An interest first discovered after watching the film Moneyball. After I saw it, I went and I read the book and I was completely fascinated. And enhanced by more books focused on sabermetrics. Just what it does is it takes every single major league player from the year and alphabetized and then just goes through like talking about like 
what they did and like how they're valuable to their team basically. With his skills and future degree from Purdue, Alex plans to pursue a career in sabermetrics and hopefully work for an analytics department of a major league baseball team. Reporting Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. A teenage boy scout has been playing taps outside a nursing home in New Jersey where dozens of veterans have died from the coronavirus. He's played there every night since April 8th. Veterans at the Paramus Veterans Memorial Home think 13-year-old Alex is fantastic and brought tears to their eyes. George Osborne, a veteran himself, says the playing of taps brings a personal bond that every veteran feels when someone serves. Nowadays, many kids might not think of this, and they need to realize what these men have done for us and um, how they gave the ultimate sacrifice to our country. Alex says seeing their reactions has made him happy, and he wants to not only give them hope, but help them during these unprecedented times. Alex's father says everyone takes a moment to pause and pay their respects when Alex plays taps. Wise young man. It's exactly 925, 72 degrees. Lots ahead on GMSA at 9. Strict parents may be making their kids even pickier, according to a new study. We have details coming up on GMSA at 9. Baker Machado brings us the latest in business and tech headlines coming up in today's Cheddar Report. And the latest on a coronavirus-related illness in children. CNN's Karen Kafa will be live from Washington with the info on GMSA at 9. And a quick check of Trans Guide as we head to break. You are watching GMSA at 9. Well, as we approach the bottom of the hour, some of you may just now be uh, tuning in, partly to mostly cloudy here of the downtown area. Did you have to see some sunshine today, Justin? I do think we'll see some. You know, it was a lot again last night. We saw some uh, pretty good rains here around San Antonio. But yes, we'll see some sun today. We'll also see some isolated showers and storms. We're still seeing some activity this morning. We watched a severe thunderstorm a little bit earlier move through Real County. That's gone. But we've got another little storm here uh, in uh, Gillespie. And it looks like a Kerr County trying to form there just north of Kerrville. We'll try to get in a little bit closer for you. Uh, it's a small storm, not severe, but you're going to see some pretty decent rain with it. If uh, if you happen to be underneath the storm, it's probably going to track off to the uh, south and east. We've also got another little storm here around uh, Wimberley. That's also moving towards Kyle and uh, along I-35 there. So uh, that's the activity we have right now. Nothing here around San Antonio, just some cloud cover. But we did get some reports a little bit earlier of some hail with that uh, severe storm that uh, we talked about. And uh, that was out in Edwards County. Got the report right there. Uh, some golf ball size hail, in fact. Yeah, that was near Devil Sinkhole. So th there is the possibility of a few more stronger storms today. Again, it's more isolated, 20% chance. Temperatures will be in the low 80s. And then we'll be looking for some more chances down the line. We're going to talk more about that forecast and let you know how much rain we could receive. That's coming up here in just a few minutes. Guys. Thank you, Justin. Uh, 35 uh, upper level there at Flores. Uh, normal traffic flow also uh, just up the highway there at I-10 at Loop 1604 near the Rim Shopping Center and a beautiful shot of some of those clouds over the uh, city at 10 and La Cantera. Latest numbers from Johns Hopkins University show more than 1.6 million Americans have been affected by coronavirus and more than 98,000 have died. And despite recommendations from health officials about masks and social distancing, the number of infections is on the rise in up to 18 states, including states like Florida. CNN's Karen Kafa joins us live from Washington with the latest. And Karen, people in some areas across the country were determined to have a normal Memorial Day weekend despite all those restrictions. So how do they fare and where are the areas of concern? Yeah, well, Leslie, that's going to be the big question because we know that there is typically that lag of two to three weeks before a lot of these infections start to show. But the areas of concern are really any other than the 10 states that have been seeing declines in cases of coronavirus. Public health officials really believe as these restrictions are lifted and people get this false sense of security that the crisis is over, that there could be spikes in cases. We're seeing such an example in Arkansas right now where the governor says they are experiencing a second peak in cases, uh, they had been on the road to reopening. The governor there, Asa Hutchinson, had even said he was going to be moving into phase two last week. But of course, they've backtracked on that simply because they are seeing a rise in cases in a way that maybe they didn't in the first wave when you had states like New York, New Jersey, Connecticut that were the focal point of a lot of the national concern. Now you've got states like Georgia, Florida that move toward their reopenings that are seeing to see their numbers move up, Leslie. 
Karen, for weeks and months now, we've heard so much about the importance of testing, and the administration has now sent a roadmap for a national strategy to Congress. What are some of the highlights? Yeah, Mark, they were asked for this by a handful of congressional committees that want to evaluate the Trump administration's response to the coronavirus crisis. And among the key numbers in that report are that uh, the Trump administration plans to be able to buy 100 million testing swabs and vials by the end of the year to send them to the states in part of to the effort to help those states meet their goals. The Trump administration also says that the target for the month of May was to conduct 12.9 million tests across the country. They want that number bumped up to 40 to 50 million tests by September, so just three months from now. But a lot of this, and this is to the disappointment of some Democrats, a lot of the responsibility to meet the numbers that the Trump administration is laying out for testing lays on the states. For example, the Trump administration says they want each state to set a goal of testing at least 2% of the population during the month of May and June. That number should be higher if they start to experience localized outbreaks. Uh, they want that 2% threshold to be met, but a lot of it is on the states to do. Now, the Trump administration has said that the federal government should be a supplier of last resort, but they are there to help with some of those goals. Of course, the, uh, the, uh, the White House had a deadline of Sunday night to submit this report to Congress. They're going to keep looking over at these committees are to really get a handle on how these states should be approaching their relationship with the federal government when it comes to that key component of testing, Mark. Karen, we're almost out of time, but real quick, can you touch on the uh, coronavirus related illnesses in children, or at least what appears to be? What do we know about how spreading? Yeah, Leslie, this is now being seen in at least 26 states that have reported cases. The bulk of them are in New York State, which, of course, is where we saw the initial cases. But doctors urging parents to be on the lookout for symptoms like stomach pain, vomiting, fever and a rash. These seem to be the telltale signals. They urge that if children are exhibiting these symptoms, they get them medical help quickly because the greatest concern here is the heart related conditions that seem to be coming from this vi uh, from this condition. It appears to be related to COVID-19 in that the symptoms start to show about two to six weeks after a child is infected. They believe this because children appear to uh, have antibodies for the COVID-19 virus, but not necessarily an infection when they present these symptoms. So certainly something that now more states are on the lookout for, Leslie. All right, King CNN's Karen Cave alive in D.C. We appreciate the update. Karen, have a great rest of your Tuesday. Thank you, Karen. Well, earlier in the show, we talked about the Spurs Give Initiative, how the Spurs organization is helping the local economy with a $1 million fund. But the Spurs are also helping youth in our community with a camp. Max Massey joins us live at Charity Bar. Talk a little bit more about that, Max. Yes, the Spurs are hosting a camp, but it's a little different than usual. It's all a virtual camp. For more on that, we have Austin, one of the Spurs trainers. So, Austin, what should people know about the virtual camp? Yeah, we're offering two uh, weeks of June uh, virtual basketball camps for ages 6 to 14, boys and girls. What can people expect if they join? Uh, we have pre-recorded videos that they'll receive each day uh, for their workouts. We'll also go live and do uh, live ball handling and agility work in the morning. Um, and then at the end, we have some guest appearances from the Spurs personnel. Can you give us any clues on who these guests can be? Uh, i got to register and you can <laughs> see, those, see that section. <laughs> All right, guys, as you can see... We have basketballs. We can't talk Spurs and not play around a little bit. So Austin here is going to give us a little example of what we can expect if you do join the virtual camp. So Austin, I have a microphone in one hand, ball in the other. Let's go through a drill right. I can do with one hand. So we're going to have our feet shoulder width apart. We're just going to do right hand. We're going to go back and forth with our right hand. Uh, right. Important not to keep our ball. eyes Ooh, up. Okay. Always look towards the basket, right? Good. <laughs> More on our side now. We'll go forward oh, and back. Just... I, I thought you were about to go behind gotta, the back. Got to push like, you a little bit. I was here. like, don't, don't trick me up here. I'm, still, I'm not in the right shoes. That's the reason, guys. It's the shoes. Good. Ooh. Also, I'm, I'm just going to say, you have a better ball. Ball is uh, a little go. bit here better. Go. Oh, Max, right right it's the shoes. It's the ball. Excuses, Come on. Excuses. Excuses. So She's good. Got I'm, I'm making it through here, Leslie. <laughs> <laughs> this might be a carry, but it's working. Good job, guys. Good. All right. Well, there you go. That is just a preview of what you can expect from the virtual summer camp. June 1st? June 1st, first thing. All right, there you go. If you guys have any questions, we have all that information right now. Just head to KSAT.com. Mark, Leslie. Is it possible the microphone was throwing off your balance and rhythm a little bit? No, it, it helped balance me out. I oh, think it might help. balance you out. We can help you come up with tons of excuses. We absolutely can. We're here for you, Max. <laughs>
<laughs> Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Max Massey live over at Charity uh, Bar. This next story really has... Uh, it bites. <laughs> wow. Wow. With great power comes great with great responsibility uh, when it comes to parenting down in... This is amazing. Uh, down in Bolivia. This is in Bolivia. And uh, parents... I, I don't know. You're going to scratch your head and then you'll probably have to talk to your kids to say, you know not to do this, right? We, That's what you would think. But three young Bolivian brothers were hospitalized after getting a black widow spider to bite them, thinking it would turn them into Spider-Man. You heard all that right. This actually happened. The, Mar the Marvel-loving siblings, uh, siblings, siblings, <laughs> uh, ages 10, 12, 10, and 8, found a spider while herding goats. Okay, so this actually the health minister revealed this to the press at a coronavirus briefing because they wanted parents to know this should not happen. They thought it would give them superhero powers, so they prodded it with a stick until it bit each one of them in turn. Mom found them, took them to a health center, and they transferred them to a nearby hospital. The would-be Peter Parkers <laughs> were transferred a third time, taken to the children's hospital in La Paz the next day with fevers, tremors, and muscle pains. Then they were treated and discharged last Wednesday, a week after they were bitten. They shared the drama as a warning to parents, saying for children, everything is real, movies are real, even though they are in fact an illusion. Um, with venom 15 times stronger than a rattlesnake's, black widows are one of the most feared spiders in the world and the most venomous in North America. Their bites aren't usually fatal, but children are among those most at risk, along with elderly and the infirm. The arachnids are not aggressive, and they bite only in self-defense. Especially when prodded with a stick by kids who think they can become Spider-Man after getting and bitten. They had to learn that lesson. Oh boy, that's a Very tough one. Tough way. Yeah. Mm. So maybe talk to your kids. I don't know. 9:39, or just about there. Exactly 9:39. It was only off by a mere second. 72 degrees. A man in Maryland has teamed up with some Girl Scouts and created a Thin Mint Challenge. Next on GMSA at nine, we're going to tell you what that's all about. If your child is a picky eater, becoming the food police only makes things worse. New study in the Journal of Pediatrics shows that parents who demand their children eat certain foods, that does not help with their pickiness. Instead, the study shows children become even, even pickier about what they eat. The authors explain that eating is one of the few things that kids have control over. Some experts say some kids are just naturally picky eaters. Parents are encouraged to make mealtime fun and to take the pressure off about what kids need to eat. My grandpa force fed me tomatoes when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. I am just now at the ripe age of 52 in love with tomatoes. Wow, I took, yeah. that took a long time to get it's, over. Yeah, it's pretty traumatic a, for you. There's a lot of trauma there. We'll talk Sorry about Sorry about that. It's okay. okay. <sighs> Group hugs. Uh, a Maryland man has teamed up with some Girl Scouts and started the Thin Mint Challenge. People are encouraged to give a sweet treat to those visiting their food banks. Bryson Popham says these cookies could help make life a little sweeter after hearing about the number of people getting help in their community. Uh, despite the name, you could donate other kinds of cookies too. The Thin Mint Challenge starts June 1st. Hey, scientists discovered a giant fiery donut-shaped galaxy. They say will help us understand more about how galactic structures form and evolve. Yeah, it's donut-shaped. <laughs> okay, that's sweet. Hmm. Researchers say it's a very rare galaxy, but has a mass similar to our very own Milky Way. Astronomers from the Arc Center of Excellence were able to get an image of the galaxy. Take a look. They say it is 11 billion light years away from our own solar system. It's glazed. The yeah, hole at the center may not look like much, but it has a diameter of 2 billion times longer than the distance between the Earth and our sun. The galaxy has been named the Kroller. I'm kidding. It's <laughs> R5519. I think is, it looks like a spaceship. Does it look like donut shaped? I mean, there's a lot In of center, celestial objects out there that could probably be construed as being donut shaped, but this one. The center part does. Yeah. I don't know what the rest of it is. Maybe those are the donut holes that are <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> on the outsides of it. <laughs> Which are separate from black holes. <laughs> totally. <Wow. laughs> <Don't know. laughs> we are so not rocket scientists. No, but we do have a meteorologist standing by waiting to join the conversation. That's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it does kind of look yeah. like a and donut. And those could be the donut, donut holes. Yeah, why yeah. not? <laughs> uh, the aquifer, guys, up huge. So we're going to go back two weeks. We're up 7.7 .7 feet. We were closing in on 660, if you remember, a little bit earlier this month. Now we're at 667.8, and that is updated as of this morning. 
the aquifer benefiting big time from those storms over the weekend. And yes, this is since May 12th, so a huge increase, and we're, we're happy to see that. Uh, the radar still showing a few more showers this morning. We had some thunderstorms earlier. These are just showers, and uh, they're moving just north of Kerrville, right there uh, south of Fredericksburg. And a little closer look there. They just missed Kerrville to the north. Uh, just passed across Highway 16 there, and it'll cross uh, Highway 87 shortly. But these are, again, uh, not severe, just a little bit more rain to, to add to the rain uh, bucket there. And you look at the visible satellite picture, uh, we do have some clouds trying to build here. So it's going to get a little more cloudy here in San Antonio. We started off mostly sunny, and it's pretty nice out there right now. But look for a little bit of an increase in cloud cover. I still think we'll be dealing with partly cloudy skies today. And this is what I was trying to show you earlier. Uh, this is the water vapor. It shows our upper level low so nicely. Uh, here it is, counterclockwise spin right there, sort of cut off from the jet stream. So it's sitting here for now. It is going to move. Uh, if it weren't to move, we have several more days of decent rain chances, but it's actually moving to our east. So we're going to be on the drier side of it, at least for a couple of days, uh, but there still will be more rain up across northeast Texas and parts of Texas. Outside right now, 72 degrees, mostly sunny. Dew point is at 66, and we've got calm winds. 72 Rio Medina, 71 Randolph, 70 Canyon Lake, 66 up there in comfort. Uh, some really comfortable numbers in the hill country right now, and even low 70s down there around Catula and Beeville. Dew points not horrible. We're in the mid 60s, but it is going to be somewhat sticky today with all that rain and uh, moisture in the soil. So let's take a look at one of our short term forecasts here, future cast. Doesn't show much through the afternoon. This is around 3 o'clock. But it does show a couple of isolated storms showing up around 5 o'clock. And I know that looks scary. I would not focus in on this. It just tells us that, that there is a chance for an isolated storm or two popping up today. Can't rule it out. About a 20% chance. Now let's go long term here. That upper level low we showed you. It does drift off to the north and east. Uh, now as we get into tomorrow, there's going to be a little disturbance on the back side of it. that tries to roll down more or less I-35. That may create uh, a complex of showers and storms. This is around 8 o'clock tomorrow. Should it hold together? We could see some more rain. I can't count that out. I think the best chance is going to be north and east of San Antonio. Then as we get into Thursday, we get another little disturbance rolling in uh, from the north, and that may produce more showers and storms Thursday night into Friday morning. Something else worth watching. For today, just a 20% chance of rain. We'll be up around 83 degrees. Northwesterly winds 5 to 10 miles per hour. And here's how it looks in the seven day forecast. 20% chance of storms north and east of town tomorrow. It does get warmer. 90. 90 on Thursday, 30% chance of rain. And then I think Friday morning we could see uh, another little complex of storms. Uh, so that there's more chances there and even some isolated stuff into the weekend. So we're not completely done with the rain chances here, but they do come down some. And uh, thankfully the flooding threat down a little bit, but we'll keep an eye on all of it for you uh, this week. Guys? And kudos to you for dealing with the mall walker that just blew past you during your weather cast there. Good job, Kevin. <laughs> right now it's 948, 72 degrees. You're watching QMS 8 9. We'll be right back. Hello, everyone. This is your daily tech and business briefing from Cheddar. WW International, formerly known as Weight Watchers, coming under fire after they laid off thousands of their employees Thursday via a Zoom call. The call reportedly lasted just three minutes and employee email accounts and company logins were closed shortly after. Now, during the brief call, all participants' microphones were also muted and people were unable to ask questions. Now, the company facing major backlash for their handling of the situation, especially from former employees, some of whom have been with WW for over a decade. Meanwhile, the 2020 New York Auto Show officially canceled. The annual event, which was originally scheduled to begin on April the 10th, was delayed to August when the coronavirus virus started to sweep the nation. The organizers now announced that the 2020 show is going to be canceled altogether. The next one's going to start April the 2nd, 2021. This year's event was supposed to take place at the Javits Center, which is still set up as a field hospital in the event that another coronavirus spike happens here in New York City. And WhatsApp is testing a new feature that will make it a whole lot easier to add contacts. The feature will allow users to add a new contact simply by scanning a QR code, a feature that's been highly successful on Snapchat. Now, WhatsApp notorious for having a difficult system in place for adding contacts. Users first had to add someone to their address book before being able to connect with them. And that's your Chatter Business and Tech Update. I'm Baker Machado, coming to you from New York City. Thank you, Baker Machado.
Well, the latest films new on home video include a pair of thrillers. And an indie drama that took its time arriving on disc. CNN's David Daniel has details. He said that wherever I went, he would find me. Walk right up to me, and I wouldn't be able to see him. Adrian is dead. He's not dead. Two weeks after it hit digital, The Invisible Man appears on DVD and Blu-ray. Bonus features include deleted scenes, a quartet of featurettes, and director's commentary. Dad, what's going on? Your father is leaving us to go and fight those wildfires. What? Also new on DVD this week is Wildlife, starring Carrie Mulligan and Jake Gyllenhaal as a couple whose marriage is slowly crumbling. Critics praise the indie drama, which was the directorial debut of actor Paul Dano. We were joking. Finally, The Hunt arrives on digital platforms this week. Betty Gilpin and Hilary Swank star in the controversial satire about the political divide in the United States. You can hunt for it on DVD June 9th. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Here at KSAT, we continue to highlight all those 2020 graduates who've overcome hardships and are expected to do really great things. Tomorrow on GMSA, Max Massey introduces us to a graduate from St. Mary's Hall. Quick check of Transguide here as we're approaching the top of the hour. The roads have dried out. I know the soil and the side of the roads are still pretty saturated, Justin Horn. Yeah, everything's going to be super green next couple days. Uh, 83 degrees today, 20% chance of an isolated shower storm. We'll see another slight chance uh, as we get into tomorrow, mainly north and east of town, and then some more chances Thursday and Friday. Can't rule it out. Uh, so uh, not as busy as maybe over the weekend, but still some chances nonetheless. Justin, did you know that flamingos get married? They do. No idea. I mean, it turns out <laughs> no bird, idea. birds of a feather really flock do together. flock together and more. They serve long, <laughs> they, they form long lasting <laughs> friendships with each other and they even get married. Yeah, the Brits are at it again. A study at University of Exeter, they, they found that they form friendships for last years. Over a five year period, researchers showed that even though flamingos belong to highly social flocks, they also spend alone time with a few close friends. They also avoid some of their peers that they don't get along with. Sound familiar? Yeah. I, I know. They have social bonds, including sexually active, monogamous, married couples, same-sex platonic relationships, and they groups of three or four close friends. Uh, the doctor says, our results indicate that flamingo societies are complex. They're formed of long-standing friendships rather than loose, random Connections. They don't simply find a mate and spend the time with the individual. Some mating couples spend much of their time together and they have lots of social bonds. And they said this is important because when they decide to move flamingos from one zoo to another, they need to make sure they move them with their people. Yeah, or not their people, with their birds. Right. They can't they can't break up, don't break them up. the flock. It's only a matter of time before they have their own dating app. It's, it's just Brilliant. Good job. Thanks for being with us, everybody. Got nothing. <laughs>